वेलकम बैक यू स्टिल वॉचिंग काउंट डाउन विद अस ट्वेंटी एट मिनट्स टू गो फॉर मार्केट्स टू क्लोज एंड वीव सीन सम प्रॉफिट बुकिंग किकिंग इन इन द लास्ट फ्यू मिनट्स ऑफ ट्रेड बट निफ्टी इज एक्चुअली बाउंस बैक द लो वॉज अबाउट इलेवन थाउजेंड एट थर्टी सिक्स एंड नाउ वी आर एट अबाउट इलेवन थाउजेंड एट सेवेंटी एक्चुअली इफ यू वुड हैव लुक्ट एट द ऑप्शन डेटा इन द मॉर्निंग अ स्ट्रैडल ऑन इलेवन थाउजेंड नाइन हंड्रेड विच हैड अ कम्बाइंड प्रीमियम ऑफ हंड्रेड रुपीज वॉज गिविंग यू दट रेंज ऑफ बिटवीन इलेवन थाउजेंड एट फिफ्टी टू इलेवन थाउजेंड नाइन फिफ्टी सो एट फिफ्टी वॉज योर फर्स्ट सपोर्ट covered from there let's see if we close above that mark or no uh bank nifty is the other one which is an outperformer for may series and probably that's the reason why you're seeing more profit booking coming in there 270 points lower for bank nifty in the broader markets alongside the benchmark indices too have seen some bit of correction but there are a lot of stocks moving around we'll find out which are the fab four stocks of the day let's go across to sharad dubey to find out hi sharad good afternoon good afternoon navni the first stock i have picked up is power finance corporation which came out with a strong operation set of numbers and the stock was up as high as almost 4% with a loan book growth of almost 13% and the net profit rising by 58% to around 6953 odd crore rupees up next we are having info edge which is up almost 3.8% after clsa came out with its uh, Rating with uh, hiking the target price to almost 2,400 rupees from uh, around 20,070. This is based on a FY20. All the segments will be firing all the cylinders, especially in the nokri segment and the 99 acre segment, and also Zomato's growth uh, trajectory is something which they'll be watching out for. And uh, next stock we are having is Cadillac Healthcare, which is up almost 1.8 percent. It came out with a really good set of numbers, and the revenues were up almost 15 percent to around 3,730 odd crore rupees. This was due to the consolidation seen in the crack. in the craft portfolio in the wellness segment and also the us revenues grew by around 9 odd percent the last stock we are having is gsfc which is up almost 2.7 percent as fresh longs were seen and a high open interest of 48 percent while the volume stated almost six times its 20 day average back to you okay thanks a lot sharad for bringing those fab four stocks for us uh, let's move on and discuss what foreign investors should be doing should foreign investors choose india over other emerging markets despite of higher valuations manishi re choudhary of bnp paribas answers the question listen in we upgraded india to an overweight in late march and right after the election outcome we increased the weight of india even more so we have a pretty significant overweight on india right now If you look at the earnings picture, earnings estimates, they are no doubt drifting down in India, mm. as in much of Asia. But at the same time, the picture looks much less dire in India than in North Asia. If you look at Korea, consensus average EPS estimate is down 35 percent over past eight months. China down 20 percent, even though that seems to be bottoming out. Taiwan down 25 percent. In comparison, India has declined possibly about seven to eight percent, and it's been a gradual, slow decline. Similar is the picture in some pockets of South Asia, like Indonesia. So these are the markets which, from an FII's perspective, are looking relatively less risky than the major pockets of North Asia, which contribute almost seventy percent of the MSCI Asia X Japan index. There's a chart, Manishi, though, that we put out this morning. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we can bring it up as well. Okay. It was the ratio of the Nifty P to the MSCI Asia market uh, price to earnings and MSCI World P, excuse me, mm -hmm. and that's back to 2019 highs. Yeah. It's it's not looking very pretty in terms of valuations, even though right. the the EPS cuts haven't or the earnings cuts haven't been that stark yes. in India. Yes. No, that is a concern. That is a valid concern, and you know I think even India would face certain degree of earnings cuts going forward. When I look at the consensus estimates, it's about 18.2 percent for 2019, which is a proxy for fiscal 20. For fiscal 21, I see a number close to 21 percent. It's difficult for these numbers to sustain. I think they would finally settle at around the early to mid teens, maybe around 14, 15 percent or so. Um, having said that, the earnings cuts are not so deep as we have seen in North Asia, and are likely to see more. You know, so when you look at these valuations, um, let's say price earnings, it might appear cheap for North Asia right now. But if that E itself is questionable, then that P might be a completely different number than what we are seeing today. And that likelihood is lesser in India. I would think so. But if if if, <laughs> if we're looking at uh, right. you know this consensus earning of 15 odd percent, uh, then why should we pay 19 times, 20 times? 
Um, see, one of the reasons is that... I mean, we okay, might, but why would an FBI Why would pay? others pay? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, India always has had one advantage, which is that this is really a more capital-efficient market. If you look at return on capital, if you look at return on equity, India, or at least the top 100 companies of India, they would generate something like, you know, higher teens kind of returns. There's a reason behind it. India historically has been a capital star of the economy, and that's why companies are so cautious about spending, spending capital. Yeah. So I think this is, you know, it's something ingrained in the management psyche of the large Indian companies. And that is why this capital efficiency tends to lead to that valuation premium. I don't think that's likely to go away in any time soon. Hmm. In fact, this was a very similar commentary that came from Mark Mobis as well. He said, I like the frugality of uh, yes, Indian companies. And the, you know, they're uh, hmm. pretty tempered in the kind of big ticket investments they right. make. They make those decisions after thinking on it for a lot yes, of time. Yes. And, and yeah. it, it probably shows up in the way no. they uh, There is, you know, I mean, shows. I wish I could show that chart. I have it in some of my presentations. It is reflected in the indebtedness of countries. If you look at debt to GDP ratio, Asia went from 140% to 210%. What was the biggest culprit? This is right after GFC, from 2008 to about 2018 or so. China went from 150 to 260 to 270%. India has stubbornly remained at about 115 to 120% over last maybe 10 to 15 years. The total debt to GDP ratio, and I'm here commenting on both household debt, government debt, and corporate debt, that hasn't really budged much for India. And this is exactly a reflection of the point that you make just now about frugality. All right, that's Manishi Ray Chaudhary there, uh, uh, overweight on India. Bringing in another guest then, Jagannathan Tanuguntla of Centrum Broking. He's joining us on the show right now. Uh, Jagannathan, thanks very much for taking out the time. What is it that you are doing right now and what are you advising clients? Uh, <clears throat> we are uh, coming to the clo uh, almost to the fag end of uh, result season. Uh, the ongoing result season uh, has not been that exciting. Uh, if you look at uh, the Nifty 50 uh, stock basket, uh, the BFSA is a clear uh, cheerleader in terms of earnings performance with almost 300% uh, jump in the profit uh, because low base effect, because previous uh, years there was a lot of clean up and NPF provisions and so on and so forth. Whereas if we come to the, the non bf FSI portion of the Nifty, the 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 top bottom line growth is as low as just two percent. So I think probably we are in the probably in the middle of one of the slowest earning season uh, in in many years. So keeping that into account, uh, probably I think the the levels where Nifty is, I think probably will have to cool off and consolidate a bit. I think uh, uh, make no mistake, uh, Nifty doesn't have the firepower of earnings uh, to back it up. I think uh, the political stability will add uh, will bring in some animal spirits but at the same time uh, earnings uh, momentum has to come back uh, for the nifty to sustain at the levels where it is because uh, make no mistake uh, at the end of the day uh, markets are uh, are function of uh, earnings uh, sooner than later that will be realized so and also the gdp number uh, figure that is expected to come in a day or two is also expected to be close to six percent or even uh, there are some uh, expectations probably we may be even in the five handle so keeping all those things into account probably some ups uh, the upside uh, at, at upside, there may be profit booking coming on the market. Investors uh, should keep the resources and uh, uh, <coughs> ready so that they can use the dips to buy. And if at all you do see uh, these dips coming in, where exactly is the focus going to remain? I mean, you must have uh, you know, had some stocks that you've kept an eye out for. Uh, from the long term point of view, we feel uh, life insurance companies and the insurance as a sector <coughs> offering uh, excellent opportunity if you are looking for uh, building up a portfolio for the next 5 10 years. Because insurance is, the, is, is at the stage where probably banking was some 20 years back. So I think uh, insurance as a space is new to the capital markets and, and all the murky names are available for buying. Uh, we feel quite comfortable with HDFC Life and SBA Life. And also thanks to the offer for sales that uh, some of the uh, existing 
existing shareholders have done. Uh, many of the stocks have, were available about a month or two months back at very good prices. So I think uh, if somebody is uh, building up the portfolio for the <clears throat> for the next 10, 15 years point of view, these insurance companies can offer a very good opportunity to accumulate. Uh, that is from the long term point of view. From the short term point of view, as a contrarian bets, probably, probably just purely as a contrarian opportunity, one may look at consumption and auto. At this juncture, by no means uh, they are undervalued, by no means they are really having the earnings momentum behind them. But as a purely contrarian bet, probably one can look at uh, uh, the uh, look at uh, the auto and consumption. And lastly, as a more popular and more current day, uh, the seasonal and current day favorite of the market is uh, corporate banks. I think that's more easy trade at this juncture, considering most of the cleanup is done and they have the high weightage in the Nifty, and also they, uh, that is the only segment in the market which is showing earnings outperformance. The BFSA, the corporate banks will remain to be the uh, the solid uh, solid uh, outperformers at this juncture. I think, in my opinion, that is the three ways of playing the market at this juncture. Uh, you wouldn't probably look at a contrarian play on PSU banks, uh, Jagannatham, considering that you know you have seen a cleanup happening there as well. Aggressive provisioning; they front loaded a lot of the provisions, and now uh, you know the path to growth is cleared up for them in a quite a meaningful way. Uh, if, you, if you are any which you are playing for the cleanup of the balance sheets and the NPA recovery, why not to play with the ICSA Bank and Access Bank? Because make no mistake, it, you are playing the same theme at the end of the day. If private sector uh, focused management is doing the same thing, why do you want to bet on the PSU management do, for, for the same theme? If let's assume there is no ICSA Bank, no Access Bank, then it would have been a different ball game. Then you are you would you would have been forced to play the PSUs uh, to play that uh, NPA recovery cycle. You wouldn't have had no choice. But considering you have a choice of ICSA Bank and Axis Bank representing the same theme, I don't see a reason why one has to stick their neck out and uh, uh, take the risk with PSU banks. Okay. Um, stay on with us, Jagannathan. Just want to address a few stocks. Pull up the intraday chart of NMDC. Uh, remember the, num the stock reacted to the earnings in the morning session. At one point of time, it was up 4% in trade. But right now, it's just about flattened up only half a percent at levels of about 102.7. Manav, if somebody had taken a long position in the morning, what should they do now? Uh, see, the prices have already seen a good uh, uh, move from its recent lows of 90 and, uh, you know, looking at the momentum indicator, it is still indicating some sort of a positive bias. Uh, it has important support around the levels of 100, so anybody holding long position should have a strict stop loss of 100 because that also coincides with the short term averages. I believe uh, in the near term perspective, if you look at on the weekly charts, if the prices uh, sees a break above 105 and closes above it going forward in next couple of trading sessions, this momentum rally could see some further legs on the upside. So at the moment, I think uh, looking at the structure, it still looks positive. 100 can be a stop loss on the lower side. And the other one which has gone up is Max Financial. This one came out with the numbers yesterday and the stock's been trading in the positive territory. Though it had an uh, opening in the red, but the stock recovered from those lower levels and currently it's sitting at almost high point of the day. Remember the VNB business uh, did pretty well for this company. Uh, Richard, on the charts at 440, Max Financial, would you take a bet here considering it is sitting almost at day's high level? Not really, because if we uh, look at the recent historical data, then this has been one of the underperformer within the mid-cap space. And also recently, also we have seen uh, many such occasions where for one or two trading sessions, the stock moves higher, but again, there has been no follow-up move. So I think unless we see a breakout above 460 mark or the up move, which has been supported by very high volumes, one should clearly avoid such uh, no intraday up moves in, uh, such in max financials. Okay, avoid any such trade in Max Financial is what Richard is advising. Uh, Jagannathan, I heard you mentioning autos uh, as a contrary bet. Uh, we had M&M numbers coming a while back and they did outperform, or rather they were better than what the street was expecting. Uh, there was some sort of margin expansion seen uh, despite of uh, volume growth declining when it came to the tractor segment, which also indicated a couple of analysts who came on the channel said the pricing power for this company could be coming back. Uh, is this the stock that features in your list when it comes to the auto pack or would you bet on something else? No, the M&M is definitely right on the top of the selection pack, no question about that. Uh, uh, remember one thing, if you look at Maruti and M&M, uh, in 2014 uh, when the government got formed, NDA government got formed, uh, Maruti was around 2,000. It went all the way to 10,000. So Maruti rallied 
five times uh, during the time of last five years. Whereas M&M uh, in 2014, it was around 650 when the uh, NDA government formed. Even now it's 650. Meaning thereby M&M has not performed for five years. So much value got uh, inbuilt into the into the stock now with no stock price rally. I think it's most undervalued uh, um, uh, auto auto name at this juncture. And also if you look at M&M, uh, the overall because of its uh, holdings in Tech Mahindra and Mahindra Holidays and Mahindra Life Spice developers and so many other group companies only 60 percent of the 60 percent of the market cap is getting influenced by uh, auto sector remaining 40 percent is coming from uh, the technology sector and the other sectors meaning thereby if, if you are buying m and m it is like a mini mutual fund where with a with a high exposure to auto sector so i think m and m is offering a great amount of comfort even during auto slowdown even if there is auto slowdown 60 percent of your business will get impacted uh, remaining 40 percent will pull the load whereas if you are buying Buying Maruti technically an entire hundred percent is has to be pulled by the auto sector. We'll have, to, we'll have to stop you there. We've got Mr. Pavan Gwenka uh, talking on the sidelines of the M&M &M results. Uh, the uh, presidents of the two uh, major businesses, the auto business and FES business, uh, here. But this time uh, Rajesh Dejurukar couldn't be here because today is his son's wedding, and uh, I guess uh, that's a good enough reason for him not to attend the press meet. And therefore, Nikhil Madgaonkar will be uh, filling in for for Rajesh, uh, Rajesh Dejurukar. What I'll do is very quickly give you a little bit of an overview of last year. And after that, we will have Rajan and then Nikhil talk about auto and tractor business in detail. And then Partha will give you an overall summary, not just of uh, M&M &M and MVML, plus, uh, but also consolidated result for Mahindra Group. So last year, as you know, was a fairly uh, up and down year. Uh, and I'll uh, talk a little more about that. And then the two businesses will also talk about it. But uh, we did manage to, again, cross 1 million vehicle and tractor sales globally. This includes uh, uh, Sangyong and all the other subsidiaries that we have outside India. And the second time uh, uh, in two years that we have crossed 1 million vehicle. Uh, we did uh, quite a bit in terms of global brand building. Uh, and uh, two, three things that we have been talking about uh, have really helped us to take Mahindra brand uh, truly global. Formula E has played a big role in that. Uh, team has performed quite well up until the last two or three races. Uh, and as you can see in this picture that we had uh, uh, the number one position in one of the races. Uh, and this has really helped our brand uh, to become global. Uh, we had a uh, launch of Sangyong new Corando uh, vehicle in uh, Geneva, uh, which was enthusiastically received. And perhaps the biggest applause that we got last year in the global stage was for uh, launch of, uh, not launch, but display of Batista in, uh, again, Geneva Motor Show. And you can see from the crowd that uh, this was a very well-received uh, 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 launch by us. You know that uh, with Batista and with uh, Corando or Sangyong, we don't directly associate Mahindra brand, but everybody knows that these are Mahindra group companies, and therefore there is a tremendous brand rub-off that we get from Mahindra brand. Uh, if I look at uh, last year, and we will talk more about that, it really was a tale of two halves. And I'm saying half tongue in cheek because it's five months and seven months. Uh, and as you can see, for each segment that we are in, uh, the growth in the industry for the first half was significantly higher than for the second half, the second seven months, that is. Uh, passenger vehicles from plus 9% to minus 2%, tractors from plus 20% to uh, just about even plus 1%, uh, HCVs from 66% to uh, minus 10%, and this were clearly hurt by the excel loading norm, as most of you are well, 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 well aware of. So what are the highlights for, uh, for last year? And now this is too faint for me to be able to read, so I'll have to do this. Uh, last year, and again, uh, all of these will go in detail uh, with you, uh, highest ever volume for both auto and tractor, highest ever export for auto, 45 lakh tractor cumulative sale, the only company in the world to have done that, highest ever revenue for auto and tractor, highest ever profit for tractor, reasonably protected margin, I say reasonably protected, protected because there is a slight drop in margin. Uh, but that is only when we compare to last year, which was one of the best years, the best year perhaps, in terms of margin. And when we look at historical average of six, seven years, we are, we are right there uh, in uh, where we have been in the last six, seven years, both for auto as well as tractor. Growth in farm mechanization, which is a very important uh, development for us, and Nikhil will talk more about that. And we sold 10,000 electric vehicles uh, in, in uh, last year, uh, for the first time crossing 10,000 mark. 
Admittedly, 8,000 out of these were the E-alpha, which is not lithium ion, uh, which is uh, lead acid, but hopefully this year you will see more of trio sales happening, and there are a couple of trios outside that you are welcome to sit in and uh, take pictures of. And then successful launch of Java. Uh, this, uh, again, is a very important event. Obviously, had no impact on PNL of last year because we started selling only from uh, this financial year. Uh, but uh, as you all know, that it's been received very well uh, as a product pricing, and we have very high bookings. So uh, the three successful launches that we have been talking about throughout the year, Rajan will cover that in more detail. Uh, that obviously was a very important development for us in the last year, and you will see the effect of that in the market share of the fourth quarter in the UV segment. So what I'll do uh, uh, in the last two, three slides is uh, talk about five things that we'll be watching for in, in 2020. Last year also. All right, just about, that's Mahindra and Mahindra, of course, and we'll keep on getting you some of the key uh, numbers and the key details that they lay out, but less than seven minutes left for the markets to shut shop, so need to focus on um, the markets at hand. Uh, first, get in closing strategies from our experts. Uh, Rajit, to you first, your top closing strategy. I would recommend buying PD light from a BTST perspective. Uh, one can go long at current levels with stop loss below 1245, expecting target somewhere around 1300 to 1310 tomorrow. Okay. And what about uh, you, Manav? See, at the current levels, I like GSFC. In fact, the prices have seen a good breakout today on the daily charts. The volumes are also uh, showing a, a, good, a good traction, at least on the near term perspective. The stock has important support at 104, 103 on the lower side. So with the stop loss of 103, we expect an upside target of 110. Okay, that's a buy call coming in on GSFC. By the way, the steel makers are under pressure. So we did take a technical check on JSW Steel a while back, but you've also got something like Tata Steel, which is down in trade. Even Steel Authority, last one I checked, uh, was trading with some bit of selling pressure. 3% lower for Tata Steel and Steel Authority is down almost 3.5%. Jagannathan, come in here on the steel companies. Uh, uh, if you have coverage here, uh, what should one do? Uh, in the specific names, we may not have coverage, but in general, uh, about steel, uh, while there is a uh, while there is always a risk of uh, U.S.-China trade war uh, getting escalated, uh, uh, and also that may lead to metal uh, demand slowdown. That that's a real risk, and also the most many uh, um, bond yield curves across the world are showing the signs of inversion. So, meaning thereby recession maybe one one and a half year away. So, we have to be very careful with the metal themes. Uh, while uh, um, so, I think it will be more easy better to focus on more domestic, more easy themes because uh, if you want to play the Modi or the political wave, I think uh, metal is a more international theme. Better, so better to focus on more local themes so that you can take advantage of the political alignment. The other stock uh, is VGAR. should pull that stock up. The quarter four uh, standalone numbers uh, came in way better than street expectations. Margins almost doubled for the counter. The stock, though, saw an initial um, a move up and then came off uh, from its highs, but it's still up close to one odd percent in a falling market. EBITDA was up 2.1 times. Do you track this one, Jagannathan? Uh, which stock you say? VGAR. So we got uh, uh, so uh, we overall now kind of the main challenge is that uh, uh, the entire uh, the demand is a little slow. I think we have to keep that in mind, and also in terms of valuations, also uh, one has to uh, look into some of these th uh, some of these themes. I think uh, um, uh, I think at this juncture we don't have the formal coverage. I may not give the uh, I, I may not give the uh, perfect recommendation on that. Mm. Jagannathan, if one were to use the dips to make their portfolio, which stock would you advise? Uh, at this moment, uh, we have uh, we are maintaining a bullish view on uh, stocks like uh, uh, HDFC Live, and even in the consumption, even though there is slowdown, we feel comfortable with Nestle and even and, and any dip opportunity. And also M and M, uh, we have been maintaining a positive view on on dips. Uh, these two are more on a contrarian bet. And uh, uh, ICICI Bank and Axis Bank at lower levels, whenever there is a dip, uh, use the dips uh, for accumulation opportunity. Uh, so um, as as far as possible, uh, these are some of the 
the large caps. In the mid caps, uh, we, again, we feel comfortable with Varak Engineering, uh, an auto ancillary name, and a stock fell almost 50-60% from, uh, uh, from its highs. And we also feel comfortable with Canfin Homes. Uh, we have been maintaining bullish stand on that right from 240 levels. Uh, we feel uh, once the a new government, once the uh, Modi government, if, if, if they can push on the housing reforms aggressively, some of these stocks uh, can take uh, major advantage. However, uh, NBFC crisis is far from over, so there will be some hiccups. One has to be cognizant of it, but at the same time, if you want to take advantage, Canfin Homes can be one, one good opportunity. Jagannatham, we leave it at that. Thanks much for joining and giving us that perspective. Manav, just a quick thought on two stocks, Vinati Organics, which is trading at LifeWise, and Delta Corp, which the last couple of days has done extremely well. See, looking at the charts of Vinati Organics, yes, the momentum is very much in favor for this stock. It is continuously forming a series of high tops and bottoms. Uh, there has been some decline from the intraday highs, but I sense this momentum is still very strong and anybody who is still invested into this stock should definitely continue to maintain their long positions. Uh, on the lower side, uh, 1950 would be the positional uh, support for the stock and um, uh, I believe looking at the current momentum will not be surprised to see if the stock manages and uh, uh, moves beyond 2200 uh, uh, in, in, uh, in the next uh, three or four months time frame. Okay, let's the markets. Gentlemen, stay on. We'll just take in closing thoughts from you. But here's how the markets are shutting shop today. Half a percent for the Nifty 50, about a percent lower for the Nifty Bank. And the small caps should come up on your screen as well. I think the broader markets too in the session today, quite unlike, uh, I'm not saying they have really cracked under pressure or something, but quite unlike the last few days, might be a bit soft on a relative basis, about well, three quarters of a percent in the red. Uh, let me talk about the large caps first, though. What's gain and what's not? So what's gain? Well, some gains for Bharti Infra, Sun Pharma gains a little bit couple of percentage points on the guidance that they've provided for FI20. TCS, HCL Tech, Wipro and Tech Mahindra show that there is some bit of flavor that's happening in IT today. What's not done well, JSW Steel 4.5, SBI about 3.5, some long unwinding being seen here for sure. Tata Steel about 3%, so metal names have taken a bit of a stick today. Z Entertainment corrects, ICICI Bank corrects and some bit of pressure on Maruti, Suzuki and Tata Motors in the session today. So autos by and large, along with metals, seem to have taken it on the chin today. But that's as far as large caps. What about mid caps, Nami? Well, Neeraj, alongside benchmarks, you also had the broader markets which came under pressure. Uh, let me start off with a couple of gainers first. There were a lot of stocks which reacted to earnings. So one of them was PFC, which was up in uh, today's trading session. In fact, if you look at the numbers, the EBITDA for the quarter gone by was up nearly 5%. And the stock uh, trading in the uh, closing in the positive territory with gains of 3% but off the day's high. Max Financial was the other one. The company came out with its earnings yesterday. The VNB business growth was good and the stock's closing at almost at day's high with gains of about 3%. Uh, WeGuard is the other one. The numbers came in today. We were discussing this uh, stock during the show as well. Good set of numbers uh, uh, but the stock was also up last week. So post the numbers the stock has seen gains of about a percent a percent and a half. Margins for the quarter was at about 10.5 versus 5.7 seen in the corresponding quarter. Aurobindo Pharma from the Pharma Pack. That was uh, the other uh, earning which came by yesterday. Good set of numbers, but uh, if one were to look at the balance sheet, I think the gross debt for this company had gone up one and a half percent higher. Nevertheless, closing at levels of 685. Canfin Homes, one of the FNO's uh, gainers for the day. The stock's closing with gains of about a percent and a half. On the losing side, S. Chant, I guess, reacting to its numbers today. The stock's down or closing also around the day's low mark with cuts of 14 and a half percent. PC Joel is another FNO loser for the day. The stock saw cuts of about closer to 9%, closing coming in at day's low. PNB numbers came in yesterday, higher provisions dented the numbers, but uh, looking at the fine print closely indicated that the fresh slippages were higher than what the street was expecting, 5% lower for this one. Reliance Capital came under selling pressure when the markets fall. These are high beta stocks, so these also tend to follow the move. 4% lower for Reliance Capital and Ujivan was down. Uh, besides that, the steel makers uh, saw some selling pressure, so from the broader market you had Steel Authority, which saw cuts off about closer to 3%. The stock is closing around the level of 51 to 52. Third straight day of uh, a lower circuit coming in for 1% beverages and the circuit limit rev revised from 20 to 10% for the day. 63 is the level. Cummins Industries is the other counter uh, which saw some selling pressure. In fact, this is the other FNO counter which saw some selling pressure towards the end. 766 is where it's closing for the day.
All right, so the three-day uh, record closing streak comes to a pause in today's session for the indices. We are down and that's the final tally on the Nifty Bank down a full percent, 300 points shaved off. Nifty 50 down 65 uh, odd points and the Sensex also losing an equal amount. The broader market space uh, is under pressure in today's session. So you've got uh, the advanced decline ratio which will come up on your screen suggesting the same. And it was probably the case right from the word go towards the end, it just worsened. So about one is to two in favor of the declines this afternoon. Well, with the markets falling today, India volatility index, I guess, once again inched higher. Uh, but for the series, it's come off the, those levels of 28 to 29 that one had seen. So closing coming in at about 16.3, higher by 3%. Uh, one day before the expiry, let's see how the, part of, uh, how the participation panned out in terms of turnover. The NSE FNO turnover has picked up from yesterday's levels of 9.5 to 10. Today, it's about 11.26 lakh crore. The NSE cash, Devina, I guess, was above 50, 51,000. So that's, I guess, uh, come, come back normalized. to... Normalized. Yeah, it's normalized. But you know what the surprising part is? The last two months when you've seen monthly expiries, one, two days prior, we've seen bigger numbers. We've seen like 15 lakhs plus. So this number probably in comparison to that, that looks a little uh, faded. But nonetheless, uh, tomorrow is the big day. So we'll see how that shapes up. Uh, but individually, contributors on the index uh, see what to gained, what lost. TCS added about uh, nine odd points to the index. Sun Pharma moved up and HCL Tech did well. On the losing, and uh, ICICA Bank, SBI, Reliance Industries, uh, heavyweights here uh, that managed to pull the index lower towards the end of trade. But uh, closing comments then from our technical experts as we head uh, into trade uh, tomorrow, the big expiry day. Richard, what will you be watching out for? So I think if you look at uh, the options data, 12,000 call option already had the highest amount of open interest. But in today's trading session, even 11,950 to 11,900 call option has uh, you know, uh, witnessed some sort of open interest ad addition. So I think we would broadly see some consolidation phase tomorrow as well. Maybe in this range of 10th, 11,850 to 11,950, this would be the 100 point range where Nifty would continue to consolidate and uh, may show some expiry moves in this range only. But purely from a positional perspective, this consolidation just seemed to be a part of an uptrend and once this expiry factor is over, we are expecting a continuation of the uptrend and we expect the uh, Nifty index to head above the 12,000 mark quite soon. Manav, your closing thoughts? See, uh, 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 I, uh, I, uh, 11,800 would be the continuous support for the market. So until unless uh, 11,800 is not breached, I sense the short-term trend definitely would continue and 12,000 would be the resistance. So this is a broader three to 400 points range for the markets in the near term and within this range you will definitely expect stock specific action to continue for the bank nifty. The important support for bank nifty is at 31,000. So 31,000 is a very short term make or break support levels for the bull. So only break below 31,000 you will witness some sort of a selling pressure. So till then I think these are the important levels to look out for. And specifically from the PSU banking space, SBI has declined from its important uh, levels. So uh, looking at SBI, which would be one of the uh, leading indicators for the PSU bank. So as long as um, uh, looking at the uh, larger term perspective, 340 is an important support for the SBI. So if SBI manages to sustain those supports and would witness a break on the upside, I think uh, that would add some throttle to the bank nifty. So going forward uh, for the expiry tomorrow, it would be a range bound, to curve, or range bound move. and. Uh, one should hold on to its support level is what we're expecting. Okay, we'll leave it at that. Ruchis and Manav, thank you so very much for joining us this afternoon with your thoughts. And on that note, it is also a wrap on Countdown. It's a goodbye from Neeraj, Navneet and myself. Thank you so very much for watching.